kids would come next? Or are you so influenced by Japan and their lack of not wanting to have kids? That, that is <laughs> that is like that is in your your mind state. Yeah, now nah, you know what? It was um it just like my career. Let me say this, like I have a very satisfying life. Um amongst my friends, amongst my wife, mm -hmm. um, amongst my career. Um, I really just enjoy my life the way that it is. That's and right. I don't feel in any rush in any way to throw kids into that mix. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm fortunate enough to have not have any kids up to this point without me trying to have kids you know what i'm saying like there was no was whoops like, uh, yeah. moments like when i was being an idiot kid in my 20s or something you know what i mean so um or my teens honestly so it's like uh i know there's just a huge responsibility that comes with having children not only emotionally but physically mentally um financially and if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something, you know, all the way. And it's really difficult for me and my wife to one, just like let go of the joy that we have right now. I don't want to create a false dichotomy that like having a kid equals yeah. not having joy. But what I'm saying is we, we're we just so fulfilled right now that we don't feel that heavy need to be like, we have to throw a kid into this. Yeah. Um, but I also know that like with my career and the stuff that we're trying to build as far as like uh, wealth and, you know, I still feel like I have so much more in my tank creatively. Uh, I don't want a lot of things to shift me away from that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, if it were to happen, if we were to get pregnant and have a kid, like I'd be totally welcoming of it. You know what I'm saying? Like it would be taken care of. It'd be loved. And I would love being a dad. Um, but if I have any say in the matter, you know, I'd probably wait uh, a little bit longer. And, um, you know, we just bought a, a new house and we're moving into that uh, next year. It's getting uh, remodeled right now. And so when we move into that, I think then we'll probably start thinking about it a little bit more seriously. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's dope. Yeah. I, I get it. What you're what? 32. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. 32. Also, I have I have two kids and I understand that everything changes. Like right now I'm in my office, but in a couple of months, this is going to become my son's room. So I just lose my office. And that's, that's it. right. There's no that's argument. Right. It's just what it is. That's, that's what it is. I, I don't have a room anymore. Um, that's right. right now. And usually I do my interviews. I try to do them after nine o'clock when they go to sleep um, because they're all over the place. They're being angels right now, which is fantastic because we can right. have this conversation. But at any moment, the door might kick in. Oh, it's, it's locked, but you'll hear the sound of a body smacking, oh, yeah. <laughs> smacking yeah. against the door. That's um, right. But yeah, man, I, I get it completely. Um, I understand like how that stuff changes. It's For that. sure. On Arrow and Sword, you very vividly describe your battles with depression, the lows of creativity coming off of that success from uncomfortable. Work in progress, you saw some of that fruit that was like kind of caught in between, right? So yeah, rebounding from that, you've been able to create, to continue to create these amazing fan experiences, marketing rollout, engagement. There's been podcasts, holiday specials. You had the, the challenges. So how have you, and I, I know you're probably still struggling with things, but how have you been able to like spark that creativity off of that rebound and just be like, yo, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, let's go all out. Yeah. Well, anxiety, uh, anxiety and depression usually go hand in hand. I think everybody deals with those things to a certain especially, degree, especially this year, for sure. And um, different life events can trigger those things, um, different life events, and also just like unhealthy patterns in your life can trigger those things. And so I don't think anybody is, uh, is, what's it called immune to that. Um, I think there's different, there's varying levels of anxiety and depression, you know, there's like, clinical I can't get out of bed depression yeah and then there's like I'm overwhelmed with negative thoughts and it's hard to climb out of this you know that's a more mild case and 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 everywhere in between the gambit but for me I think uh I got in my head that um I was supposed to be further along than I was you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying and that becomes a really dangerous game of comparison where 
you know, you can't really enjoy what you have because you're concerned about the things that you don't have, you know, and that's why I mentioned that and always in a rush where I said, um, missing what I got for things I still ain't get, you know? And so it's like, there can be, you can have this whole meal in front of you. There's this meal to feast and enjoy and be appreciative of. And all you can do is think about how the guy across the table got a bigger chicken breast. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I want that chicken. It's like, enjoy your own meal. And I think, um, for me, it was, uh, recognizing what was happening with me. It was going through a meltdown in, at the end of 2016, early 2017, that uh, got me into therapy. And I started just working through a lot of my crap. And as I worked through it, I was given these tools um, to understand myself, uh, understand my mind better, understand my circumstances better, and uh, my own history, <laughs> you know. And with that, I think I've become a much healthier person, not only for myself, but for yeah. other people, for my employers, uh, my wife, um, my art has become better. And I think, you know, it's just like anything, man. It's like you can either become a victim of something that happens to you or you can use it as fuel to be a part of your story, to grow from it and continue to move forward. And I think that's what I've done is just said, yeah, these things have come into my life, but I'm not going to just roll over and die and let these things consume me. I'm going to figure out how to work with them, deal with them, you know, get better from them. And I, and I think I'm just in a healthier place than I've ever been because of that. An interesting thing that comes from getting healthy is almost this contentment that like so much of a driving factor of my career at one point was like to prove that I'm valuable. And now that I've done the emotional work to realize that I am no matter what, like no one can take that from me. It's almost, it's almost hard to find that tenacity again, to just be like, I'm going to rip someone's head off when it yeah, comes yeah. to this rap, you know? Cause I'm like, what do I got to prove to you? What I'm going to rip your head off? You know, like, Oh, I can rap better than you. Like, don't care. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just tr now trying to just continue to have fun. You got to think like, I've been doing this a long time. So to like find things that keep me excited and, you know, it's always like, I'm on this search um, to, to find things that make me excited. Cause if I'm excited, I'm having a good time. Usually the fans are as well. Um, yeah. and I never want to get to a spot where what I'm creating, I'm, I'm creating art to like pay the bills. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just creating, um, as like a, like prostituting art, you know, just like making art. So that's like, we can make the money to go and do whatever. Yeah. So that's not what I got into this for, you know? Um, so I think staying humble is another piece of that. Like, I feel like I, I've achieved some things in my career that I could brag about and be like, you know, inflate myself. But it's like, one, I think that's just silly because, like, what do we have that God didn't give us? You know what I'm saying? But two, it stops you from being humble and learning and trying new things and and being wrong or, uh, you know, having like welcoming other perspectives that could make your art better or help you look at things differently. So I'm just trying to stay um, curious, I guess. You know, my taste is evolving as an artist as well. Yeah. The different music I listen to, my taste in in food, my taste in raps, my taste in things to talk about. It's really interesting. Like, I used to just want to talk about myself all the time. And like rapper tendencies. <laughs> rapper, it's a rapper, super rapper tendency. And yeah. now sometimes it's even hard to write raps because I'm like, who cares? Like, does anybody really want to know this thing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even find that very interesting. It's funny now that I listen to like younger rappers and like the stuff they talk about in their songs and how they're so consumed with what they think is such a big deal in their life. And I'm just like, I'm just not interested in hearing this. Like, <laughs> but it, it really is a, um, it really does to somebody else. It's interesting. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, uh, it's like certain TV, you know, like gossipy kind of rumor. Yeah, yeah. kind of TV. Like, I don't care. I don't want to watch it but it, it scores really high on ratings because a lot of people want to, want to watch that stuff and feed into dig it again. And I'm just like, man, I, it's not for me, you know? So I have this tension in, in my cre creativity where I'm like, I don't really want to go down some of these tried and true paths because they don't really interest me. I got to do what is inspiring and, and interesting to me, but uh, you know, that comes with its own, its own path or journey, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. No. I might just sound like I'm rambling at this point. 
no, nah, no, nah, you're good, man. And what are you, you hearing me say? Well, listen, I, I've heard you say that you've matured and turned into probably the person that you're going to be for the rest of your life with that with that perspective of of life that certain things that may have mattered in the past in the grand scheme of things they never really did matter you've come to this conclusion before becoming a father which gives you a big leg up because for me it's like yeah all these things matter then you have kids and you're like wow nothing actually really mattered i had my daughter pick out my shirt before i sat down to talk to you that's fine <laughs> it's like it's like whatever like yeah. you have, you have come to this realization already and i think when you do eventually become a father when you're ready it's just like it's it's going to be kind of like an easier transition of the mind where i'll throw my office away cool now my son has a room like those things those yeah. things will become like even easier <laughs> Because like you're already there, you're you're like, sure. you know, I'm a husband, you know, I'm in charge of my business. This is what I'm doing, and it, it's interesting to hear people like yourself um, speak about kind of that that self worth when you know success for everybody is relative, and people may look at you and be like, oh, Andy is super successful. He's one of the top guys in Christian rap, and you have like yourself and Lecrae and people like NF that are like the biggest artist but even you guys are just like man like i don't know if that's you know if i'm happy where i'm at uh but sure. i'm glad that you were able to you know be able to to talk that out and go to therapy and like figure that out and now you share your experiences and that helps other people who are listening to your music so it, it's just like a, a cycle it's like i guess when when the the christian rapper first starts right it's like we got to get everybody saved we got to do all this stuff but now sure. what happens to all those those christians now that have been saved that you brought in now they're actually living life and now you're talking about the life of a christian um where a lot of times those answers aren't accessible or they're not popular to talk about so yeah for sure i appreciate your heart on that and and this evolution in your music that touches on that stuff, I think is super helpful and beneficial and very relatable um, to, to people, to people more in our age bracket. Um, it's great. Yeah. Word. Thank you, man. So you, you've sprinkled in and you were just talking about a little bit, all these loves into your music. We've had wrestling, we've had food, Japan, what hobby or passion is left untapped for you in terms of entering into your creative space? Uh, like what things have I not do uh, do dove into yet? Yeah, like really incorporated in your music or, you know, your rollout, your design, whatever, if yeah. anything. Yeah, I think um, I think I'm still. I think I'm still trying to level up my music videos and like a good guy to work with for videos. It's like we have a, a couple good videos and then that person disappears out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I've been really trying to build that consistency. Uh, with some new guys and so like this season I'm working with a great director's name Isaac D um, and Adele just Mustafa who's like my creative director uh, we're working on video stuff too and so that I feel like that's always been I've always tried to create really interesting and dope videos and it seems like every season I've had somebody Francis Della Torre who was with me on Saturday morning cartoons and then I had like mm -hmm. um, you know we are films when I was in New York and then I had uh, who else did I have Oh, Marcus Tortorisi. That's what I'm thinking of. Marcus Tortorisi, who did the Doing My Dance video and Dunk Contest. And, like, we were working together, and I was like, all right, I think I found my guy. And then he's like, hey, I got to go do Star Wars commercials, you know? <laughs> no, I got to go shoot yeah. stuff for Champion XYZ. So now, yeah. so now he's, like, he's really hard to access because he just glowed up so crazy, yeah. you know? And so it feels like I'm always starting over when it comes to finding people to work with on videos. And uh, me and Isaac Dietz just put together two incredible videos for this last uh, project, Always in a Rush. We did Herman Miller. And so I just feel like um, there's still levels to go in that. And I'm trying to reach that um, place where I want to be aesthetically and visually. Um, but for the most part, man, I wish I could just scale what I do. I think I have so many ideas and just not enough hands on deck or not enough budget to do it. So I have to basically, sh like, I'm, I'm not like Kanye level where I could be like, yo, 
I have a lot of money and I have a lot.